Good afternoon, my name is Leslie Puckett. I'm with Workforce Solutions Capital Area. Thank you for joining this webinar this afternoon. I hope that it's helpful to you and helps you along with your job search. Today we're gonna to talk about how to work it, how to network on social media to find your dream job. This webinar is pre-recorded, but if you have any questions, please reach out to us at k-12awareness at wfscapitalarea.com. All right, let's get started. So you may be wondering about the value of having, having a professional online presence. You might not be on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any of those social media sites, but having a professional online presence, such as LinkedIn, Indeed, and even Work in Texas, which is our statewide workforce database, is essential for many job seekers and really increases your network professionally. So today we'll talk about strategies to set you up for success and help you create the best professional so social media profiles you can so you can find your dream job. We'll talk about some of those platforms, including LinkedIn, Indeed, and Work in Texas. Talk about how to set up your profile, some of the crucial elements that need to be filled out in order to gain the maximum number of views from hiring managers and recruiters. And then after you set up your profiles, then what? Some of these platforms are very thirsty and continu continuously need content. So we'll talk about some tips on how to post articles, follow different individuals that you're interested in professionally networking with and discussing things on discussion boards to how to create content and keep yourself active on these platforms. You may be wondering, why are these networking and job search platforms getting to be so big? They've really started to boom over the last five to 10 years. In fact, more than 90% of companies now use social media to recruit. And they can really benefit the job seeker as well as the employer. Once you set up your accounts and really show in your profiles the skills, interests, certifications, and education, and experience that you have, these platforms will send you job postings that align with all of your qualifications and interests. So you really can sit back and relax and these platforms can do the job searching for you. Also, whether you're job searching or comfortable in the job that you're currently in, it's a great way using these platforms to keep in touch with colleagues, mentors, and follow professional organizations activities. So let's start with LinkedIn, one of the largest, about almost 700 million monthly users. 27% of all Americans use LinkedIn. And the gist of this is that users create profiles that allow them to interact with other professionals, employers, and recruiters. So it's a networking opportunity for a lot of individuals and they find it valuable. It goes back to the profile. LinkedIn profiles are what's, what are very visible for users. So let's talk about four of the main elements of the LinkedIn profile, the headline, skills, profile picture, experience, and education. So that way you can have a profile that really shines. So the headline obviously is located at the top of your LinkedIn profile. It's more than just a job title. You really want to sell yourself, stand out from the crowd with this. Talk about who you are as a person. Why do you do what you do? You really want this to appeal to a recruiter or HR manager so that your profile sticks out among all of the others that they're looking through trying to find their perfect candidate. If you kind of draw a blank and you're like, what do I put here? I just don't know. You might want to think about other people that you know who have great LinkedIn profiles. See what they put. How, do, how are they coming up with catchy phrases that describe who they are in a nutshell? Um, so you can definitely look for inspiration to other individuals' uh, profiles on LinkedIn. Now for skills. It's, it's important to list the right skills most relevant to your career. You know, I have a lot of, I, ha, I think I have a lot of good skills. I'm a good gardener. I'm a fast typer. I, I think I decorate my house pretty well. 
but I don't know if these skills are most relevant to my career. I'm more interested, and I currently work, in project management and data analysis. So I do a lot of work on in Excel with numbers, and then I, you know, I'm very, I try to be organized, and I work with delegating different tasks per projects to accomplish them. So I think for my skills, I would say I'm proficient in Excel, I'm organized, and talk about some of the other skills that pertain to the job that I'm in or want to be in. A good thing about the skills section is that other LinkedIn users that you know, so your professional colleagues that you've worked with, can endorse your skills. And this is a good way to help authenticate the skills that you have and you're trying to showcase. And it shows to the hiring manager that, you know, oh, these two people are saying that this candidate is good at this function, this skill, and it helps you validate what you're saying that you can do. I'd recommend listing at least five skills to maximize profile views and messages from recruiters and other LinkedIn users. This makes you look more well-rounded, shows that you have a lot of skills to offer. Here's a good infographic on some of the top skills you can include in your LinkedIn profile. It talks about different ways to mention skills depending on what type of industry you're, you're looking for a job in. All right, the profile picture might cause some ang angst for people trying to figure out what the best profile picture is, but I hope I can give you a few tips on how to pick a profile picture that will stand out on your profile. Put your best face forward. Users with profile pictures receive a many, many more profile views than those without. Some common sense tips, make sure it's not pixelated or blurry. Even if you have an adorable dog, don't use a photo with your pet. Um, don't include other people in your profile picture. Choose a photo that represents you. You want to come across accessible and someone that the hiring manager or recruiter could see in that specific position. And finally, this is a big choice to pick your profile picture, but you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. You can hire a photographer or find somebody who has a knack for taking photos and can capture you and your personality. All right, now we're gonna watch a, a very quick video with some additional tips on how to pick that profile picture. As a LinkedIn employee, I'm often asked, what makes a great photo? Do you dress up or go casual? Should you smile or look serious? Well, firstly, you don't need a professional photo shoot, but probably avoid the photo from your ski trip, the selfie with your friend, and maybe take a photo without the sushi. So what does make an awesome profile photo? Just wear what fits what you already do. If you don't wear a suit to work, then don't wear a suit. It's all about being approachable and letting people know who you really are. And a smile never hurts. So you have your starting photo. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. There are plenty of things you can do to quickly polish it up. Start by adjusting your contrast and brightness. Perfect. Then get the crop right. You want the focus to be on you and not what's behind you. We're getting there. Then there's some great photo filters to choose from. Give yourself a little bit of star power. And there you have it. As simple as that. A professional looking photo without the professional photo shoot. If you add a profile photo, you'll get up to 21 times more profile views. So why not give it a try? Right, next we'll talk about experience and education. Now this is a place where you can brag about yourself. You can talk about the universities, apprenticeship programs, community colleges, wherever you obtained your education. You can also talk about your professional job experience here. And this is a good way to show hiring managers and recruiters what you can bring to the table. Short and sweet. Keep it short and sweet and give these hiring managers the nuggets of information that they need to find out that you're the best candidate for the job. Two to three sentences is the recommendation. Quantify your responsibilities as much as you possibly can. How many people do you manage? What is your department budget? How have the projects that you've been working on impacted the community, for example? If you can talk about it in that way, 
then you can show the impact of your work. Definitely front load your achievements. Put things that you're most proud of and what were most successful at the top. Use action words and keywords. So keywords are words that are taken from the job description of the job that you're looking at applying for. So that way the hiring manager can see how your experience and education aligns with the job that they're trying to fill. Avoid buzzwords though. So buzzwords are words that are common and seen in so many resumes that they're not, they don't give a lot of information about what you, you've done. So I'm thinking about being strategic, being responsible, things like that. You need to be able to quantify and explain your success rather than using buzzwords that are too common to really provide anything meaningful. Also pay attention to present tense and past tense. Use present tense when you're talking about your current job, past tense when you're talking about your former work. Also list education in reverse chronological order, starting at the top with your most recent degree that you've graduated with. If you have other questions or wanna do a deeper dive into writing your resume, you can check out another one of our webinars, which is called Laying the Foundation for Your Future, Resume Building. All right, so that's that on LinkedIn. So let's go on to Indeed. Indeed, just like LinkedIn, has many, many users. So over 250 million unique users each month. And so this is a, a job search database where job seekers can search for employers' job postings, they can upload their resumes, and they can research their, you know, research company reviews to really weigh the pros and cons of applying for different jobs. And I liked this infographic, uh, tips for Indeed, for using Indeed for your job search. It's good to be simple, use different keywords to find different jobs. So if you use a keyword, it'll match with a job posting that has that keyword in it. You can also get the mobile app. So that way, depend, wherever you are, you can check up on your job search. You can set up email job alerts. That's like what I was talking about earlier. You can make these programs work for you and send you customized job alerts. You can also use the salary search tool. So in addition to setting up job alerts and looking for keywords to find your ideal job, you can also select a salary range to make sure that the jobs that you're looking at meet your budgetary needs. And then a, a good way to stay active and kind of feed that hunger for these platforms, which I'll talk more about later, is to participate in discussion forums. That way you're working, you're networking with other people on the platform and you're, you're learning as much as you can about the job search. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about it in a second. <laughs> from a hiring manager, which is me. I've hired several people during my professional career, and so I can give you a few tips and tricks and apply to Indeed as well as just generally um, apply to the application process. Indeed makes it extremely easy and efficient to apply for many jobs at the touch of a button. But I would encourage you to be thoughtful about the jobs you pursue and ensure that the skills and qualifications that are in the job posting align with your own skills and qualifications. 
I would also read the applicant directions in each job description. So some job descriptions will tell you you only need to submit a resume, but some will ask for a cover letter. So in Indeed, you will see a variety of different jobs from different companies, and there are different uh, directions for each uh, company. So I would make sure that you understand exactly what company A is asking versus company B, and that you provide all the information that each company is asking for. Because recruiters and, well, HR managers are dealing with hundreds of applications for one position in some cases, and if they don't have all the required information with them for the application, it's a good way, or an easy way rather, for the HR manager to you know, get rid of some of the applications if they don't have everything that they need. So if the job description asks for both a, a resume and a cover letter, make sure to submit both. I also encourage you to proofread your, sum, your submissions before you apply. This applies to Indeed as well as any time you apply for a job. A good thing that I like to, I've done in the past and I, I always like to do is to ask a friend or family member to provide feedback before I apply for anything. It's, it's always good to have some fresh eyes, look over your information that you're about to submit and offer some constructive feedback. All right, so the last one that we'll talk about today is work in Texas. So Work in Texas is a job search database created by the Texas Workforce Commission. Workforce Solutions Capital Area, which is my organization, works locally with employers in Travis County as well as job seekers to connect the two. In addition to Work in Texas, which is an online database, Workforce Solutions Capital Area also offers multiple job fairs each month and courses on interview writing, interviewing, resume writing, and other skills that job seekers need, just to let you know. As of April 27, 2020, there were over 2 million active resumes and 480,000 job postings on Work in Texas, and the numbers continue to grow. If you have a desire to learn about how to apply or rather to register with Work in Texas. We have four webinars that we've created on our YouTube page that are accessible right now. So we have how to register for an account. We have both English and Spanish translations, how to build your resume on Work in Texas, and how to set up your profile. Let's talk a little bit more about how to create a resume on Work in Texas. I'd recommend and advise that Work in Texas is a precise system. So once you set up your account and your profile in Work in Texas, it is a very efficient system of matching you with jobs that you're qualified for and will send you email alerts on with those jobs. So it's, it's really efficient. As I said, it's a precise system. So you have to make sure that the experience and education that you provide in Work in Texas and your profile matches with the job postings required experience and education. Otherwise, you won't be able to match in the system and apply for that position. So accuracy is um, very important in this system. I also like to highlight the tell your story section. This is where a job seeker can create a compelling eye-catching overview of who you are and your professional goals and can help push your resume to the top over other job candidates. This is sort of like the headline, I think, from LinkedIn, a way to catch the eye of an HR manager. So really, like we talked about earlier, try to think of some compelling words that you can add to this section if you create your Work in Texas account. All right, so now that we've gone over how to create platform profiles, we'll talk about how thirsty these platforms are. <laughs> How to maintain an active and relevant professional social media presence. I'm not just talking about hashtags for everything that you do during your day. I would recommend using industry recognized hashtags so people can follow the conferences and professional events that you attend. 
I'd also encourage you to tag other people in your posts, like individuals, businesses, where relevant. I wouldn't recommend tagging 50 people in one post, perhaps just two or three people from an event or colleagues that you're working on a project with, but it's a good way to expand your network or expand um, knowledge um, in the, the LinkedIn community, for example, of the work that you're doing. Another easy way to maintain an active and relevant social media pr presence is to like or follow your dream companies. Not just your dream companies, really, but any company that seems interesting to you that, that can help you learn more. It's a good way to stay up to date on issues that are most important to these companies and to help you ga gain more knowledge about your industry. And really, what, what is social media? You're trying to brag about yourself <laughs> through LinkedIn and, and some of these other platforms. You're trying to show that you're the best candidate for the job. So I encourage you to post journal articles that you've written, successes you've had at work, uh, interesting things that have happened to you on the job, other accomplishments that might not be on your resume. Talk about the conferences that you've attended, speaking engagements, things like that, that show that you're trying to stay engaged and constantly learning. I think being a continuous learner is very important in, in this day and age. I'd also encourage you to join industry groups such as LinkedIn's to stay up to date on industry changes and expand your professional network. I feel like the world is moving at such a fast pace and there are so many innovations that are taking place that some industries are changing very, very rapidly. And it's really important to stay up to date on the cutting edge innovations um, and innovations that are happening in some of these industries. Well, that's all I have today for you. I, I really appreciate your time. I hope that this was informative and helps you along your professional journey and that you have success in your job search. If you have any questions, like I said before, please reach out to k-12 awareness at wfscapitalarea.com. Thank you very much. Goodbye.